Hello, and welcome back to Chasing Psychological Safety. I'm almost loath to talk to you today about the topic um, that we've written about yesterday, simply because I sound like a broken record to myself, and I'm one of those people that absolutely hates repetition. But the truth of the matter is, we I can't ignore it. We can't ignore it. No one can ignore it. We should stop presiding over the fact that no one's okay, and we're not doing anything about it. Let me explain again what I mean. Irrespective what industry you're in, irrespective um, whether or not you've been a key worker or a knowledge worker, um, and almost irrespective of what work has been done or what processes have been put in place so that this becomes better, if anything at all has happened, the fact of the matter is that almost everybody right now is in a genuinely downturn moment, if you wish. Um, no one's all right. Look around you. If people say they are, they're exaggerating, they're masking, they're potentially lying. Um, the, what we see, what we observe, what we see from the data and what we see from talking to all of these teams is that the processing of what has happened to us never took place. The discussion on what was what kind of mental illness or what kind of mental unwellness, um, because we, we seem to still reject the idea that we could ever be ill from a mental point of view. Um, did we come in with um, into the pandemic? And what effect has the pandemic had on that mental state? So, you know, many of us were already burnt out, many of us were on the way to becoming burnt out, many of us were stressed, many of us were disengaged with their job. Um, and then the pandemic happened on top of it, this extraordinary situation that has kind of kept us all in, in, in the most incredible of, of, uh, of, of stress hormone pumping um, environment and context for a very, very long time. And we have then been expected to simply find the reserves within ourselves to deal with it and um, carry on as if it had never happened. That's an insane thing. If people go through any other kind of trauma, we fully expect them to be um, talking about it, processing it, understanding it, and kind of tuck it away in a box. But if you don't do that processing, if you don't do that talking about it, if you, do, you don't tuck it in a box, then what you do is you carry it with you. And it affects every other aspect of your mental well-being. And it enhances and makes it worse if you already had pre-existing conditions. And it just brings about new ones if you didn't. So anyone who is having a touch of anxiety will suffer extremely more now. Anyone who was depressed, anyone who was dreading their work, um, anyone who was genuinely suffering from bad environments with disastrous culture and, and bad bosses is now feeling it a lot more. The, um, the pressure of functioning while doing the people's daily job has been immense. I talk about that in my book uh, to a large degree, this work-life unbalance that we now have to mitigate is not helping. It's actually adding to the stress. Um, and just in general, we are in shambles, all of us. And we're not going to get better until we take some responsibility for that fact. And until as an enterprise, we help our people and as human beings, we help ourselves. It's just not going to get better. It's going to get worse. In fact, there was a, a study that came out just last week um, that says that not only would people not recommend, they're speaking of MPS, not only would people not recommend their workplace, but 46% would not wish their job on their worst enemy. Let that sink in. One in two people feel so bad about the work they do every day, the things they have to, to get through, that their everyday life, that they would not wish it on someone they don't think well of. 
I mean, think about the level of extreme disengagement and, and pain and suffering that's happening around us. And what do we do about it? We don't talk about it. We don't bring it up. We give people a hotline at most, and we kind of pretend it's not happening. So this elephant in the room, the elephant of the mental crisis at work that will only deepen is going to start overshadowing any of our other efforts. We're not going to get agile done while we're having a mental health crisis. We're not going to get digital transformations uh, to, to get to where they need to be while we're having a mental health crisis. We're not going to get productive. We're certainly not going to get high performing. We are not going to get to a place where people are well. And if they are not well, they will not be doing good work. And the fact that anyone in the enterprise, any leader thinks that there is any other higher priority than restoring our people to a level of, of mental health that will let them be productive and, and high performing is insane. So what I would urge you to do is firstly, be honest with yourself. How do you feel? How are you waking up? How are you sleeping? How are you going through life? How many times a day do you have to tell yourself and will yourself to keep going? Um, how many moments do you wish you were somewhere else, wish you were someone else, wish you were doing something else? How many times do you see yourself and others not engage when you normally would have done? All of those are serious signs that something's wrong. So first see it in yourself. Then start looking around you because most of our colleagues may not have the self-awareness, may not have the tools to communicate this, but they're most likely going through the same things. Um, you'll see them complain more often of, of family issues. You'll see them tell you that, that there, there are things happening in their personal lives. And realistically, there might be, obviously, everyone has um, issues as they go through, and in particular these days with the state of the economy. But what is the truth is that all of us at, at the macro level have not spent time dealing with the trauma of the pandemic. And that only adds to the fact that we weren't quite that well from, from a mental perspective to begin with. And that only adds to the extreme disengagement in the workplace. And all of those put together will paralyze us um, entirely in all industries in the near future, unless we do something about them quite soon. Again, I, I'm conscious I sound like a broken record, but I'm also conscious that knowing this and talking about something else is insane and it needs to stop. So knowing this and talking about employee experience is insane. Knowing this and talking about employee satisfaction or happiness when we have so many gaps at the most molecular level is insane. So we can't in good consciousness ignore the magnitude of the mental health crisis and the fact that it starts or it, it, it predicates on our lack of having processed how the pandemic affected us. So I would urge anyone who is in HR listening to this or anyone who is um, a leader that wants to see their company succeed, that's, a, that's an important uh, um, distinction to make, to look around, to look in the mirror first, admit how they're feeling, and then look around and then attempt to make these things better. And making them better will be a combination of getting people to take some personal responsibility and step it up on the self-care and to do some of the, of the human work in the teams and then to support them and coach them and give them tools and permission to do this work. It's almost that simple and that complicated in, in one but it needs doing. And I think if we're honest and if we look ourselves in the mirror, we will agree that it does. So see you here next week talking about something else, but reminding you that this is the number one task, being honest about the size of the mental health crisis and being honest about the human debt this creates and the need for the human work to start fixing some of these. Thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next week.
Bye.